students. I'm totally aware that I'm the only thing standing between you and lunch. So I'm gonna to try to make this quick and meaningful to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Scuddy. So my son, Adam, had Dr. Scuddy as a professor. And I said, I, I told him she's going to introduce me. What do, I, what do you think? And he said, she's a quote, true legend of the game. So I don't always speak the same language as my kids. I'm not even sure what that means in an academic context. But I think it's a compliment, and I think I would agree with it. So for me, it's hard not to stop and stand here uh, and just take this all in. I'm so humbled by this honor. To me, Jewel means family, literally. I was the eighth member of my family to go to William Jewel. My son, Adam, was the 13th. Uh, I met my wife, Dina, on this very campus. Many of my family members uh, are here today, uh, my mom, Dina, Adam's girlfriend, Christiana, just to name a few. My uncle Jim, who was part of that generation who started the tradition of going to William Jewell. And my son Andrew is not here today, but he was here last night and we had a, the all 11 living Jewell grads, family members together. So I'm so blessed. And you can see why to me, Jewell means family. But I wanna talk about this concept of community and family and, what, and Jewell being a, a family itself. Uh, and if I tried to thank everybody who was part of this, I'd be up here all day, but I wanted to just thank a couple people. Uh, President McLeod Walls, uh, you're an inspiration. If you look around this campus, uh, your fingerprints are everywhere. And the goal of making this a vibrant campus that attracts the best students and the best faculty uh, has really been lived out during your time. And so thank you, it's an honor to be your friend. Um, fellow honorees, John Gill, you've been a friend for a long time, and I'm so impressed with your dedication to William Jewell. And Lilia Tosin, I'm, it was great to meet you this week. I'm so impressed by your work. It's selfless and amazing, and so thank you. And then finally, I wanted to mention Esther George, uh, the former president of the Kansas City Federal Reserve, and as it so happens, my former boss. Um, I'm so proud that the college decided to give you the Critical Thinker of the Year Award. You do represent critical thinking. And at the Fed, we always talk about concepts like supply and demand, and I would say critical thinking is in short supply in our world, but in high demand. So when you work for Esther, by the way, uh, you better have some critical thinking skills. She could be tough. And I remember a lot of times where I needed to go to her office and convince her of a position, and I knew she wasn't going to like it. So I go into her office, and I, I've never told her this, but I used to tell my peers, it's like a 10-round boxing match, and you just know you're going to get knocked to the canvas in the first round. So go in there, make your argument, you get knocked down, but then she would listen, she'd counterpunch, she'd listen again, she'd punch again, and then she'd reach a conclusion, and that is critical thinking at its best. Most of the time, I didn't convince her I was right, but occasionally I did. So I wanna just spend a final few minutes talking about uh, the, the college experience and in particular, the Jewel experience with a real focus on that word experience. Um, we're in an age where the so-called college experience is often devalued um, by society. College is sometimes thought of as uh, a commodity. It's just a place to get a piece of paper. It's like going to get gas in your car. You can buy it anywhere, and it's just a thing to get you from one place to the next. And for some people, I, I absolutely understand that may make sense. But to me, uh, the experience of Jewel is irreplaceable. It shaped my life in so many ways, and it's how Jewel became part of my family. Like many of you, when I first went to college, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I've lost count of the number of majors I went through. So it was mathematics, art, computer science, engineering, and all made their way into my plans. But ultimately, I decided on business with an intent to go to law school. And I had some great business professors. Uh, Kimberly Harris comes to mind. She was a great teacher, a great mentor, um, and encouraged me all along the way. But strangely enough, when I look back at my time at Jewel, it's not the business degree or my business classes that I think about. My memories are made up of experiences outside of that that I cherish. So experiences like listening to Cecilia Robinson, who's now Professor Emeritus and here today, talk about Maya Angelou and, and great authors and poets of our time. 
She really emphasized the value of great literature or seeing artists like the great tenor Luciano Pavarotti, the Alvin Ailey dance troupe perform as part of the Harriman Jewel series. Uh, a small kid from Maryville, Missouri, all of a sudden gets exposed to a completely different aspect of life. And it was fantastic. Prior to that time, by the way, my idea of music was basically the Rolling Stones, Van Halen and 80s rock. And so even though I had that experience, I have to say even today, that's still pretty much my favorite type of music. Experiences like uh, Dr. Don Gilker, who was a brilliant physicist in his advanced physics two class was to this day the toughest class I ever took. Uh, I learned so much about physics in his class, but the main thing I got from that class is it was at that time I decided maybe I shouldn't go into engineering. I'm going to go to law school. Uh, I had such great mentors and the ability to meet new mentors here in college. Somebody like Gary Barnes, a current trustee, who was my actual mentor when I was in college. I can't forget about Coach Holly's 1987 basketball squad that went 32 and two. 32 and two. Uh, I can still name the five starters from that team. And I recall campaigning for student senate in 1988. And my running mate, Cheryl Roberts, is here today. And our slogan was experienced, dedicated, organized, concerned, vote Zahn Roberts on April 12th. We'll surprise you. And I think we surprised even ourselves because we won. And then finally, experiences like taking a religion class from Dr. Milton Horn. And I have a story that he will not remember, um, but it came at a time, it was his first class at William Jewell, the fall of 86. It came at a time where I was thinking about law school, and it was notoriously tough, and I mean tough. We were into the Old Testament and deep into the Old Testament. Even today, when I hear the word Yahweh, I think about that class. And so as it would happen going into the final, I had a solid but totally unspectacular B in the class, and I needed an A on the final in order to get an A in the class. And so the final exam didn't go so well. Uh, got it back, my essays were all marked up. So I did the only thing an aspiring lawyer could think to do. I made an appointment to go in and argue for why I deserved an A on that exam. And so I prepared, I wrote out my notes, my outline. I went in to see Dr. Horn. He listened patiently while I argued, I deserve an A on this for these reasons. And then he said, you're gonna get a B, but have you thought about law school? And so. So there you go. So experiences. These are some of the things I remember most about my time at Jewel. It's the experiences. And some changed my major. Some were just for fun. Some developed relationships, but some changed my life. And nobody does experiences better than Jewel. Times have changed. Jewel has changed. But the experiences provided by Jewel are everywhere. So my advice is to study, work hard, get your degree because you're gonna need it. But more than that, experience all that Jewel has to offer. Get out of your comfort zone, do things that shape who you are as a person and let Jewel become part of your family too. So you know what today is? It's a great day to be a Cardinal. You know what today is? It's a great day to be a Cardinal, thank you.